Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Ryan Sokol, and I'm an associate professor at the University of Maryland College Park. Today, I'm going to be sharing a number of tips that are designed to help you in your preparation of your microtest abstracts. Here's an overview of what I'll be discussing today. One note is that if you check the description under the video, you can see that there are links to each of the different parts of the presentation. But if you're running low on time and it's a matter of triage, I would highly recommend focusing on these three particular parts. So one of the important things to highlight at the onset is simply the motivation for why one would want to attend Microtas. And this really comes down to the way that Microtas and some of the other conferences in the microsystems fields are regarded in the international community. And that's because these particular types of conferences actually have a technical program committee that peer reviews all of the submitted abstracts. And not just that, but as there are some conferences where essentially everything that gets submitted gets accepted, that isn't really the way that this works. And here you end up having more competitive acceptance rates. And as an example, oftentimes the acceptance rate for an oral presentation ends up being below 10%. And so as a result, these types of conferences and microtests specifically are regarded very highly in the international community. Now from that, one of the questions that students sometimes ask is, well, why go through all the trouble to try to get accepted to a conference like microtests? And from my view, it's, it's really the quality of the research that's being presented and then the interactions that one can have with the people who are actually presenting that research. And in a lot of ways, this is a, a really unique opportunity to be exposed to what is really the true state of the art and, and where is the field going much earlier than you would be by just kind of sitting back and waiting for it to come out in journal form. As an example, this is a presentation one of my students delivered at Microtask 2017. And the concept of fully 3D printed soft robots with microfluidic logic, in this case a hand, was being proposed to the entire Microtask community. Yet, it was nearly four years later when the actual journal paper was finally published with that soft robotic hand, with the microfluidic circuitry, as other types of demonstrations. As a result, it wasn't really until this past year that we've seen groups take this concept presented at Microtask 2017 and really run with it and develop other types of 3D printed soft robots with integrated fluidic logic. And so by attending Microtasks, it's a way to get a glimpse into where an entire field is going and as a result, be able to get a head start in that particular direction. To focus now on the Microtask abstract itself, the overall format is broken down into two pages. On the first page is the main text, and this is designed to have 500 words at maximum, while the second page is focused on the figures, typically including six figures and or tables. One other note is that the references can either be included as part of the first page or as part of the second page, as shown here. Now, one of the most important aspects is to come up with a great title. And the idea here is to come up with a title that builds excitement for your work while still being accurate and informative. For example, this is a title of an abstract that was selected for an oral presentation at a previous microtest. But the caveat to this is that you don't want a title that oversells your work where basically the title generates significant excitement for the TPC, but then in actually going through the results and so forth, that actually it becomes a bit of a letdown. So it should really be somewhat of a balance where genuinely the results you're presenting are indeed exciting, and also you're able to come up with a title that represents that accurately and well. Now, arguably one of the most important parts of the entire abstract really comes down to figure one. In a lot of ways, this is your very best way to make an excellent first impression with the TPC during their selection process. In putting together a great figure one, the motivation is to come up with, with some way to help whoever is reading this particular abstract to learn the concept behind your research with as much understanding as possible as quickly and I would say as painlessly as possible, all while trying to minimize how much complexity is needed to, to put together the image. And also because you only get that one page for all of your figures to make sure that it doesn't take up too much space in putting it together. To help provide some guidance, I'm showing some examples of various figure ones that were selected for oral presentations at Microtas as well as other conferences in the field. In combination, I hope these provide some sense of the different flavors 
to how these different figure ones can be put together as shown from the examples by my students. The next most important part is paragraph one of the main text. As weird as it is, this is essentially what I'm referring to as an abstract within an abstract. And so what I'd really recommend if you haven't seen this before is to take a look at the nature summary paragraph format. The idea here is basically to take that nature summary paragraph format and then condense it into roughly four to five sentences with an additional sentence that's designed to be an introductory or overview statement of the abstract. To provide an example of this, I'm highlighting this particular paragraph one. And as you can see, we start with that summary statement, and then we get into a little bit of detail regarding the basic introduction of this area, this field. And then we get a little bit more specific and discuss the general problem that's gonna be addressed by the work. And then we get into that statement that here we present, here we investigate, here we introduce. We move into the main results of the abstract, and then lastly, we provide that broader perspective of the results. Certainly, it doesn't have to be this long, and it will vary from abstract to abstract and topic to topic. But at the end of the day, these are all aspects that should be touched upon at some point in the various abstracts. And that brings us to the remaining figures. Conferences are in many ways a visual medium, which means that strong figures are one of the best ways to convince members of the TPC that your work should be accepted for an oral or poster presentation to the conference. And so oftentimes there are figures associated with the fabrication process and the results. Oftentimes there are theoretical results. These could be from finite element simulations or something like that. Then there might be aspects of the experimental setup if this is a unique setup for these particular types of experiments. And lastly, and probably most importantly, are the actual experimental results. And so I'm gonna show a few examples of some of these from some of the past works that were accepted for oral presentations from my group. So this is an example of which was selected for the Outstanding Paper Award at IEEE MEMS 2021. So in the left, in A and B, you can see examples of the simulations and the actual results for 3D printing this particular component. And then in C, D, and E, there are micrographs of what the results actually look like after they've been printed. And then on the right, there are some examples of what this looks like with a better frame of reference for just how small these components are. This next example is from work we're gonna be presenting in about a month at Robosoft 2024. So here, this is, this is our figure one for this work. And as you can see, there's this concept of having bending due to pressure. And so of course, that kind of informs the type of theoretical results we'd wanna have. So these were finite element simulations that show what performance and what type of deformations would be expected for certain pressure ranges. In terms of experimental results, these are examples from work that we're going to be presenting at the Hilton Head Workshop in June. And so here we have it kind of divided. So first we presented our results in vitro, and then we show our in vivo results after that. And then lastly, usually there are quantified experimental results. And so there are some cases where, where that's not possible, but in most cases, experiments should be designed in a way to generate data that can be quantified and analyzed. And so now we get back into the remaining text, and that often comes down to three main paragraphs. First, there's the paragraph two that focuses a little bit more on the background. At maximum, this should be five sentences, and I'm highlighting a few aspects from another tips document, actually from the Whitesides group, that I would recommend reading. But essentially in this paragraph, the idea is to highlight the justification as to why the work being presented or the application is important, then adequately discussing prior work, then moving into the critical barriers for this work, and then lastly, providing some guidance. What is needed to address these barriers and move the field forward? Next, we get into paragraph three, which in a lot of ways should be one of the easiest ones to write. The focus here should be on highlighting the critical details that would be needed for someone outside of your group to be able to effectively reproduce your work. The caveat here is that 500 word limit. And so it's really important not to waste too much time going into too much detail of processes that are well established or well known. So it's important to be strategic in terms of choosing which aspects require more or less detail. Now the last paragraph is often the second most important paragraph of the abstract. And so here we're trying to highlight the key results. Were there any results that were surprising or unexpected? It can often be important to compare the result to those in prior works. If there are any results that are especially important to the field, this is something that really should be highlighted. And then lastly, it's important to also provide some broader perspective of how the results fit in with the rest of the field. Next, we have the references. Dude, your references are out of control. Everyone knows that. Thanks, man. That's really nice of you to say. Honestly, I think the reason for this is that we typically try to include just six to eight references with a couple general rules. And so if you're presenting brand new content, 
Of course, it's important to highlight some of the seminal works in the field, but often this might be from many years beforehand. So as a general rule of thumb, I recommend that most of the references are fairly recent to really highlight what the state of the field truly is at present. So the last aspect I'll be discussing is in terms of selecting the right category when submitting your paper. So that kind of goes up here. And for whatever reason, this is something that has caused my students a little bit of stress in the past. And so I'm gonna discuss it just very briefly. So essentially, as you can see, there are a ton of different categories and subcategories that one could choose for their abstracts. So the best recommendation I can give is try to pick the category for which you feel that your results would be the most exciting. And even in the worst case scenario where maybe all the categories selected aren't the best fit, the TPC still is able to transfer it to another area. And so the best thing to keep in mind is that if it really is mislabeled or something like that, that's not the end of an abstract. It's still going to be reviewed adequately and appropriately. And so with that, I want to acknowledge uh, just a number of my collaborators because I've been highlighting work that kind of really isn't just from my group, as well as the funding sponsors for my work. And lastly, I want to wish all of you good luck in putting together your competitive Microtask 2024 abstracts. And I very much hope to see you all there in Montreal, Canada in October.